chance They were born in bloody circumstance To go to the Scottish Rugby Podcast. Johnny has made it back just in time. Well done, Johnny. Frantic uh, during, the, during the intros there. Uh, yeah, well, welcome everyone joining us live on the Scottish Rugby Podcast night. And if you're listening back uh, tomorrow, then hello, good evening. Um, very special uh, episode tonight, but first of all, we'll get the Motley crew out of the way. Uh, I'm joined by our usual suspects. We've got Craig Manson. How the hell are you, Craig? Even all, doing great, thanks. Great to be here. Glad to hear it, Craig. Glad to hear it. We've also got uh, again. Do you do you pay for your lights by the like? Do you have to put money in the meter for those, Ian? Because have uh... you seen the price of electricity these days, man? <laughs> <laughs> if yourself. Um, no, we just go for mood lighting. Also, apologies. We... I'm kind of halfway through McDonald's. It was late. So, <laughs> um, Keep, yeah. Keeping it professional, Ian. Love it. Love it. And uh, we're also John's got it. The man does got you. This is true, pal. This is true. Uh, we're also joined by Johnny, who I, again sneaked in last minute there. I had a wee panic during that, Johnny, because I thought, like you said, it crashed, but I was like, "Have I crashed?" <laughs> no, it's just me. Just you this time. That's, that's back. good to hear. I was back. I heard the last symbol of the intro as I <laughs> that's uh, that's cutting it pretty fine and. As I said, a special episode tonight. We are joined by none other than Murray McCallum, Scotland International himself. Welcome, Murray. Great to have you along. How are you? Hi, no bad, no bad. Try to keep myself busy in the current redundant state, but I'm doing well. I'm all right. Doing well, well. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have a, a good laugh for a wee, a wee bit of time with you, and we can uh, uh, see see what's what's going on with various things. No doubt we'll touch on the uh, the circumstances around said redundant state. Um, we can maybe have a wee bit of a, a, a moaning or groan about that because it's fairly nonsense. Um, 
those of you joining us, if you happen to be joining us for the first time, where have you been? But uh, you can <laughs> obviously support the podcast in its usual way. Uh, head over to patreon.com slash Scottish Rugby Podcast uh, to subscribe to the, um, the content. You get exclusive content for your money, £3 a month, um, where you will you'll get the exclusive hands in the ruck section and some other stuff like Ian done some interviews recently. We've also had um, some Patreon specials up there. So uh, well worth it. Well worth the pennies. Cost of a, a beer if you go to a cheap pub somewhere. Certainly not a, not a beer on uh, any of these. I, mean, I was out in Glasgow the other night and beers are ridiculously expensive. This is like... What what is the world coming to? I'm I'm going to just start drinking at home. I think. Let's see if that or you end up in a weather. You start making your own. It might be cheaper. I reckon. I'll, 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 I'll make your own. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think that's that's the game actually, isn't it? Like that's uh, it's the the gin. That's what it's at. Get, get in the gin act. <laughs> John making <laughs> gin in a bathtub. I'd go blind. <laughs> Prohibition, John, over there. <laughs> I just, I don't worry, Murray. When, uh, when, when this all goes horribly wrong, I'll, I'll reference back to this episode and be like, "Yeah, it was Murray's idea for me to start making gin in my bathtub." You've heard it here, here now. You know the, the new, the new launch of bathtub gin. <laughs> and it's uh, and, and Murray's going to have to start wearing like uh, shorts with bathtub gin on the arse of them and stuff like that when he's uh, when he's been at Look, you know, he's 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 not not the arse up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like Johnny was saying there, like there's like Rudy Jackson and that they've got their own gin distillery. Yep. So uh, Murray's just going to have to go full moonshine. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's go, go one yeah, better. It's a bit fancy. <laughs> None of this like fancy artisan gin like Rudy Jackson's making. It's called it prop like, gin. Make, make corn liquor in a basement in Dunfermline. <laughs> Jobs are good. I'll be able to sell it to Pfeiffer, definitely. It'll go, it'll go very well. Very well. Yeah, so Not only can they drink fancy. it, they can run their motors off it. <laughs> <laughs> For for our, for our fans and and faith in the surrounding areas, we do apologise for uh, <laughs> any offence caused. But uh, but he, he's not wrong. <laughs> so um, yeah. So one one of the things we tend to do when we when we get a guest on the podcast, Murray. Now th- th- this might be the first time we've had a guest who actually could do this. Um, but one of the things we tend to ask is um, when the barbarians come calling, as they inevitably will in your career. What's hmm. what, what's your sock makeup going to be? Oh, that would. Uh, oh, no. I don't. Uh, it would have to be um, Dunfermline and Heretz. Mm. <laughs> Who's doing that? Who's Dunfermline? <laughs> I'm on mute. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to be Dunfermline and Heretz. Um, depending how. Because Dunfermline and Heriots are quite similar at times. I might be able to sneak a Strathallan one in there, a school sock, because they uh, they certainly help me out, um, get me playing some rugby. But uh, aye, my, my main teams would definitely be Dunfermline and, and the Nails, because uh, aye, briefly at Grammar, um, and got great fun up at Aberdeen. But aye, I'd have to be almost the first in the half. <laughs> One of one of my former clubs as well, Aberdeen Grammar. It's uh, that was a good good laugh up there. Oh, yeah. that Long house. time before you. Cause... I'm kind of glad I didn't say Kirkcaldy because I've just quit a job that the the sponsors of Kirkcaldy Rugby Club at the moment uh, <laughs> are my now former employers. <laughs> you'd, you'd have seen Craig and I flipping our laptops if he'd said Kirkcaldy. You wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kirkcaldy were really good in my coaching journey and I've always had good friends there however um, I, 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 you never saw me turn out playing for them <laughs> I, was, uh, I had, uh, I had uh, good family friends the Robertsons growing up and Billy uh, Billy was my age and he played for Kirkcaldy and his dad Sandy was coaching the coach he always said he'd get me along to play but no nah, he didn't succeed didn't succeed <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah, it, it is a bit weird having like an actual professional rugby player who might potentially play for the Barbarians uh, to answer that question. Oh, if, but, if, if Ryan Wilson can get get to go and play for the Barbarians, everyone, anyone's got a chance, man. Jesus, man, <laughs> you, you <can> <laughs> <laughs> nice tonight. 
I know, that's <laughs> it, yeah. Don't you worry, Craig, I've got plenty scheduled for for that nonsense. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The other, the other, the other, the other big burning question, and uh, th- this has been asked of uh, former Scotland captains. It's been asked of uh, you know um, ma- massive, massive people in Scottish rugby. Um, and this is the big debate. I want you, you, you could be the voice to settle this tonight, Murray. Um, flake, twirl, or ripple? Twirl because you get two bits in it. Yes. Oh, oh that's, yeah. that's, that's a potential. That's a prop right, answer right, right there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a flake ripple, the mess. Ripple, ripple's probably the most indulgent one, I'd say. Flake's not got the protection on the outside. So <laughs> it's good. Too much, too much drops in you. Um, ripple's certainly got the most indulgence in it, but you get two bits with twirls, so you've got, to, you've got to go with that. So there, there you go, folks. Uh, and do you That's know what? That's a fairly like, definitive answer, actually. It is. It is. I was hope- comprehensive I was hoping for chocolate. Comprehensive. <laughs> did did Laidlaw not say flake though? Like a pure weirdo. Wait, Laidlaw said flake, but he died. Like uh, a, he's 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 metronomic though. He's kicking. Sure. He'd be very precise with the way he eats it. When he drop it, I think it's too all over me. It is a brutal feeling when you, you like start smashing into a flake or a twirl or whatever. Oh, no, like, it's, like, it's later on when you roll chocolate. over off the couch and you're like, oh, I've just melted <laughs> something out of the couch now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's crumbs. The chocolate will stick to your clothes, it sticks to the yeah. couch. Yeah. Uh, oh, and because it's wee bits, it melts so quickly as well. It's oh, everywhere. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the worst one is when you're, when you're out actually going into a job and you've been in the car, and the bit of flake has gone down between the seatbelt and your shirt, and it's just made a nice brown mark right here, uh, and then you look like a total fan. Uh, I can't say anything. I'm, I'm not <laughs> really if, you're, if you're eating <laughs> flakes speak, on your way to meet Craig. clients, that's a you problem, Craig. <laughs> like that's, that is a schoolboy error, and you deserve everything you get. <laughs> just buy a twirl. <laughs> Just by it. Well, there, there you go. That, that probably solves a lot of the debate here. But you know, I, I think the def- definitive answer for money, right enough, very, very comprehensive. So thank you for that. Shall we? We're only thirteen minutes in. Shall we think about some rugby then, guys? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, sort of need to well. we have to. Yeah. Well, okay. it was a fuss for everything, didn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Well, let, let's let's cover. Obviously, we've got Murray with us tonight. Uh, absolutely delighted to have him here. Let's cover the news down south. Just coming out today, uh, where we've got um, wasps uh, being suspended from the league. Just about to enter administration in the next couple of days, mirroring some of the some of the situation that's obviously you've just been through, Murray. So, uh, talk, uh, the first thing I want to kind of talk to you about, like from a player's perspective. Obviously, there was rumours doing the rounds for quite some time around Worcester. How hard is it as a player in that environment? I mean, it's brutal. It's uh, it's brutal just to get your head round. Um, but <sighs> that's probably more for the playing aspect and the kind of training. The the mental side of it is made much easier when you are in the club and you've been um, you've kind of you've got you've got the gaffer. You've got Dimes who's like. He's, he's trying to steady the ship and, and keep us kind of on the straight and narrow and keep us calm and the other coaches doing their jobs uh, to kind of provide sessions and lead in that sense. But then the fact that all the boys are in there as well and they're all going through the same thing really helped in terms of us just obviously you saw the hashtag together and everything like that. But it was, um, that's exactly what it was, kept us all, it kept us all kind of talking about it and reassuring ourselves or if we wanted digging ourselves a hole and going into a spiral. Um, which you need sometimes, uh, but no, nah, it was. It's been an absolute roller coaster, particularly particularly the last two months. Um, I mean, there's been kind of troubles, rather it's been rather apparent kind of financial troubles for a few months. But when it started hitting the news, and then obviously the most recent kind of happenings, that's when you were like, right, okay, this uh, this isn't looking great. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Steve Diamond during that as well. That like it was, it was. I I found it very like obviously like in that situation you want people to step up and you know Steve Diamond didn't before didn't exactly have the best reputation as you know at some of the clubs he'd been at. But it sounds like you know everyone has spoken so highly of him and from from what kind of came out in the the way he was behaving during during everything. It sounds like he was an absolute absolutely brilliant. 
Oh yeah, no, I have to agree. Uh, he was he was fantastic um, in in kind of keeping us positive and and just keeping the boys going. Um, he always gave us a choice uh, in terms of he he'd voice his opinion in terms of I think you should maybe do this. So uh, this is my take on things. But then he always did give the boys a choice whether they wanted to kind of train or not or play. Um, and uh, I mean, he's a good leader. He's um, he's convincing with uh, with some of his arguments. Some boys, me in particular, me as well. Uh, I would have gone into training a couple of days saying, "I'm, I'm not doing it today. I'm not doing it. No, no being paid, no training." Uh, but then you'd listen to his argument and you'd speak to other boys, and you're like, "You know what? We can we can maybe get a go for another kind of couple of weeks, couple of days, see what the crack is." And um, he did. He helped. He, he did kind of fight to the end. Um, from from his kind of leading perspective, and uh, and and boys kind of boys followed him in the battle. How did you how did you find the the, the, the real juxtaposition with him then? Because obviously you know he was well documented when he first came into the club um, of basically telling everyone, look, you know those that aren't doing the job um, have are are risking their their livelihood here. When he first joined, and then you know, obviously he's trying to get a performance out of certain players, and then all of a sudden, it, it really just seemed to be. I guess I suppose he's a street talker, and, and you'll always you'll always thank him for that. But it, it seemed a real juxtaposition that all of a sudden he's gone from this. These these guys need to sort them, sort themselves out, and then all of a sudden he's now keeping you all together. How how did you? Was there that that sort of? This guy's an absolute. Egypt when he first joins and then all of a sudden, you know, then he's proven himself or did you like him from the start? Obviously, he's, like like you've kind of, like you mentioned earlier, John, his, you know, his reputation kind of precedes him the way uh, and, and his time, um, he hadn't been in uh, before, obviously with Sale and Saracens and whatever, he, he he did have a bit of a reputation in the league and boys obviously like myself, kind of any experience in the Prem and around himself, uh, were a bit kind of apprehensive to approach him at the start because uh, he did when I first came in obviously it was Solly was still there and JT was there and Dimes was just in as a kind of consultant and then kind of we got back for the Zebra week and uh, boom JT had uh, parted ways and Dimes had come in and taken over and I think there was certainly a lot of uh, I'd say worried um, and potentially uh, I wouldn't say scared by just mainly worried and kind of apprehensive boys like oh god how are we, are we going to get a game is he going to bring boys in who knows but to be fair to him he he was he was honest from the get-go he gave boys chances and he and he rewarded he rewarded boys playing well um and and he did stick with boys even if they might not have had the best game to begin with uh, but as long as they didn't if you if you screw up once right sound screw up twice all the best um, and he was, yeah, certainly my personal opinion, my, my personal experience, he was incredibly honest with me. And um, we built, and uh, I think we've built quite a good relationship throughout our time at Worcester. And um, I'd, uh, I really enjoyed working under him. Fantastic. It's, you mentioned there, um, Murray, obviously, you know, almost rewarding people playing well. And I think one of, one of the things that's kind of come out of this, we've all been desperate to see you get game time. You know, obviously you've spent time at both both Edinburgh and Glasgow and then going down down there and seeing seeing the performances you, you were building, starting to put in. And I think the, the frustration is, you know, you get, you're starting to get that game time and then obviously abruptly gets cut. Sure, I can see you shaking your head. Just, I'm sure it's quite Build some momentum and it just gets taken. Just gets taken. <laughs> and uh, I, it's, it's, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, incredibly frustrating. Sorry if I cut you off there. No, not at all. No, no. I was, it was, yeah, it was kind of just. It, I was sure it was quite frustrating for you. Um, <laughs> So obviously, with with everything that's happened, you know, you found yourself, as you said, in in the redundant state. Um, what what's next for you? Where's irons in the fire? Certainly, um, conversations being had. Um, my poor agent's working double time. Uh, I've got him um, certainly in this keep, but no, nah, I've put all my trust in him and the, and the other boys he has kind of working with him um, the, uh, to do the job for me. And we don't, and obviously. Hopefully, I'll have a kind of a couple of options to to consider. Um, here's uh, hopefully, and uh, I will 
obviously consult with the messes, consult with um, my my agent, and see what what he thinks would be best for my development. Because ultimately, I want to be playing rugby, but, um, and I also do want to get back in that in that national team because I have some serious unfinished business there. It's been four years, um, and I've not had a game at Murrayfield yet. So that's something yes. actually that that I was going to ask you. Um, in terms of you know getting back into the Scotland team and stuff, um, that I've always been kind of curious about is you're obviously saying you're going to have a, hopefully going to have a couple of options. Perfect world. Would you, for your development and getting yourself back into the, the Scotland setup, would you want to come to Glasgow or Edinburgh where you're you're training and playing week in week out with the guys who are looking for the same jerseys, or did you like? Kind of when you and Rory were down in Worcester, you're a little bit further away in the Prem or in France, and you're kind of out of the log jam a little bit and getting a chance to show what you could do on your own. Which what would you prefer if you had the choice? Obviously, I love being back up at home with my mates, and that's kind of I'll always consider. Um, obviously, Edinburgh is my first club is home, and in Glasgow playing with them, and I've got lots of mates at both clubs. But the main thing for me is playing rugby. Uh, and I want to, I want to play, and I want to play at a high level, and I want to play consistently. And you, you mentioned yourself there, Johnny, about the um, there's, there's a lot of players up north fighting for the jerseys. And if you're fighting for the jersey at club level, um, and and you might not be getting the, the kick of the ball there, you're certainly not going to get it at national level. So having us kind of spread out uh, benefits all of us, I'd say, because then we're all playing rugby. Obviously, we want Scottish rugby to do incredibly well. And we want Glasgow and Edinburgh to do incredibly well, but then we don't want to stunt the development of our own players uh, if they can be playing regular rugby elsewhere, which um, myself, Rory, and, and Duhan all were. Uh, and thankfully, Rory and Duhan will be are sorted out, and they will continue to play at a high level, and hopefully, I will as well. And uh, I'd like to um, find myself somewhere where I can be just playing, like I said, playing regularly, because that's how you build momentum. Uh, it's how you build confidence, it's how you build match fitness, and that's what you need going into national camp. I'll always have the, a rapport with the boys up there because they're my pals and that's home, um, and I'll always be able to come back to that uh, and you, you fall back into it if I hopefully do end back up in camp um, at some point. And, and I that's think, it, sorry, when you go here. Um, so it's kind of one sort of similar to what Marie was saying. Um, obviously, you know, we've got uh, our Twitter friend Sam Larmer, he does. Uh, good analyst and when he was doing his um he said um when he had unfortunately had to sort of say here's where i think worcester's players would best fit you were in at glasgow warriors i did see uh, that i did see yeah. that <laughs> and um now i just sort of remember from my time like when ollie cable ollie cable got moved from loose head to tight head um i think there's guys like yourself and uh, darcy ray and alex allen um, maybe haven't been given enough game time at Scottish clubs and maybe been not exactly pushed out but because other guys other foreign recruits have come in who needed to be captured by residency you know do you, do you like I think particularly your position it needs game time to develop especially sort of that match intensity that you know getting going up against gnarly loose heads no, 100%. Um, playing rugby, particularly as a prop, is what you need to be doing. And I always say that to youngsters. Uh, I played in, I obviously played for Dunfermline. I played for um, Aberdeen Grammar in that too. I then played at Heriot's in the Prem. Uh, I've been loaned out to God, I can't, Derek Ryden Picnic or Bloody Ackies one year. Um, in the, in the, uh, in the draft, him and Kane from those Dunfermline pals picking me for Ackies. Uh, so I've, I, and as long as you're playing rugby regularly as a prop, particularly as a young prop, um, that's that's going to be the best thing for your development. And that's what I always kind of say to kind of budding youngsters: like, unless you're going to play at the top top club, just go and get your head shoved up your arse by some grizzly old man. And that too, away to Selkirk, away to Peebles when I was at Grammar. Um, God, I had some horrible things happen to me, but it's it, it helped so much. And um, yeah, it's 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 just playing rugby is the, the main thing for a prop. Because that's like even Johnny Gray, like Johnny Gray played for Campbell's Lang, which is where I'm from, and you know, he was like stage three of we'll have you in the Warriors training camp. He was like, nah, I want to go and play national too. <laughs> you know, well, that's it, right? Go home if you can. 
And I think I think I think that's the thing, though. And uh, you know, it's, in in my humble opinion, we are quite threadbare at tighthead uh, in the international game. Now I know, obviously, um, you know, we you have to kind of distance yourself from us talking about other players, and we're not going to embarrass you by doing that. But you know, we do. We have got, you know, if. if Especially in the form, and I'm going to sound like I'm soaking up to you here because I've already done. I've already said to you that you're playing well, but um, you know, in all, in, in looking at what you were doing uh, at Worcester, you were putting your hand up um, and saying, "I'm here," because I think that I think your form has absolutely come on and on with Worcester and playing in the Prem. So, you know, there, there is that. I'm sure there's got to be that opportunity um, uh, to to get the jersey back. I appreciate that, Craig, and. Um... The, the the coaching staff have kept in touch. Um, I, like like I mentioned to you fellas earlier on, I I was up in Edinburgh, um, for the last uh, or Edinburgh and Dunfermline between uh, my missus' mums and, and and my own my own mums in Fife, and uh, I bumped into all the Scotland coaches, um, at uh, at the game um, as I stole out uh, hospitality that Doug Struth very kindly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> A pint in each hand because I'm taking them out in the plastic glasses so I can have them for the first half and I get the tap on the shoulder and it's uh, it's, two, it's uh, Gregor Townsend and he's like, hello, Murray. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, followed by JD, Buddy Gavon, uh, AB and uh, Steve Tandy. So uh, yeah, that was really good laugh. Do you have a cigarette <laughs> hanging out your mouth at the same time? Let's <laughs> <laughs> the flag out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, none of that, Jess, none of that. <laughs> um, but no, they, are, they they have kept in touch and they've um, and a couple of coaches came down to watch our training session before we played Newcastle, uh, our last week of uh, rugby at Worcester, and they came down and, and we caught up with them there and and they and and they, they mentioned that it's just good to have C boys playing regularly because um, that's 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 just what that's what all boys want to do. Absolutely, yeah. that that looked like a hell of a weekend that Newcastle weekend. Uh, it looked amazing, yeah, it was uh, some game. <laughs> uh, was, uh, that was that was good fun. We had uh, well starting on Friday, uh, we had a Zoom call with the RPA, PRL, RFU, uh, and all of our staff and all of our players before we went and did the team run, basically to find out what the crack is. And we didn't know the crack. Um, it was basically it was it wasn't said, but it was suspensions looming X, Y, and Z. And then Dimes turned and asked us, and he's like, "Are we going to play on camera to everyone?" And then they all the kind of folk on the camera were like, oh, I don't know. So they gave us a bit, and we all um, ticked or crossed on a bit of paper, handed it back into dimes, and it was like, right, six, uh, two thirds, two thirds of the sides, and seventy three percent or something. And he said, said we'll play. So we actually made, we we had the, we got given the decision to use actually what to play tomorrow, um, and then we, I'm glad we did because we went out and played bloody well. Uh, and, and really enjoyed it. And uh, as you will have seen, because it, it was all kind of documented online, we uh, went out into and it was uh, after that. Ollie, uh, Ollie Lawrence, it was his um, 20, 23rd birthday the week before. Um, keep forgetting how young he is. 23rd birthday the week before. I was going to say, is Ollie Lawrence only 23? He's a bairn, man. Aye. <laughs> and, uh, he's bloody good at rugby. Um, oh, yeah. and he, he, he we'd, uh, we'd sorted out uh, Kadena, one of the bars in town, um, to make sure everyone got into that. So it was, and then Dimes had already mentioned he was at say with a social after Newcastle, and then all the boys, like Ollie, everyone kind of turned and looked at Ollie, and Ollie went, We've kind of got one sorted, and he went, Sound, we're coming. And he was like, All right. So all the staff rocked up as well. Um, and then once we, uh, oh, yeah. once we had, like, once suspension was confirmed, there was a there was a couple of Sunday day twos um, knocking about, and then training can uh, resume the next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, from, from a practical perspective, Murray, obviously, what what? So, how how you've managed training whilst everything was obviously kind of in in flux there? Yes and Since, no. Yes, had, yes and no. We had conversations before Irish. We'd maybe had one contact session, wow. one or two scrum sessions because we were like. We're not sure we're not playing. If we're not paid, we're not playing or not everything like that. So, like, we tried not to use it as an excuse, but we were undercooked for that game. We'd done, we hadn't done as much like proper smash that we'd wanted to. Yeah. Um, 
So training did um, obviously go ahead, but it was the players just said like we're not doing that at the moment because we don't know what the crack is. And then by the time after Irish, we're like, you know what, we're in the prem now. We're in we're in the season. We need to do it. So we just kind of yeah. pulled our socks off and like sound. We'll get on with it. Yeah, I remember one of the coaches being on the ITV highlights program actually after Irish, saying basically we're a month behind everybody else. Oh, easily, yeah. And obviously, we we've, we've been the Glasgow game, which was uh, which was gutting for uh, for myself. I was looking forward to get, I was looking forward to that, um, and uh, and I had and I felt for all those boys as well. Luckily, they still got a bit of a hit out against them, the Bulls, against good old air. But um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best for both parties. And I had boys messaging me like, "Are you playing?" I'm like, "Mate, we've not been paid." And then um, it was the next day; we still hadn't been paid. And then we got I got paid. I got paid about half eight Friday night, two or three days late. Uh, so that's why, and then that was so. But by then, obviously, um, they were on the pitch. <laughs> they were playing in their um, in the preseason game against the Bills. So that's why nothing ever happened. Once, once everything kind of came to an end, it was still what, what, how, how, how have you kept fit since then? What, what have you, been, have you been training since? Or what, We've, what luckily, the administrators allowed access to six ways at the moment, um, strict times and things like that. If you want just to use the pitch, because uh, obviously the building and that's insured because there are people kind of cutting about. So, but just we've not got any trainers, so we can we can go in and use it. Um, there's been uh, the, the people down here, the community down here, have been incredible. We've had um, various offers um, of of people allowing boys to go and use the facilities, um, which has been great. So, but because you want to use you want to use a good pitch and you want to try and use a good gym because uh, I've done my fair share of running on dodgy parks and and farm tracks, and that's the last thing you need when you've not got a physio. Then I was to roll your ankle in a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, I absolutely. Especially you know, the big thing with it is it's not as as you, you forget or we forget that um, not having just a basic thing of a physio because of the, the you know your your um, you know we we get pissed off if um, if our car breaks down on the way to work um, mm-hmm. because that's 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 our, our that's part of our job and your you know yeah. your body is your is your job so it must be really frustrating. Oh, yeah, it is, it is incredibly frustrating because obviously we, we do know that we want to keep fit and stay as match fit as possible, but it's it's trying to um, weigh that up with the with the risk of maybe having that and and, and also the the motivation because at the moment when you've not got a club, the peaks and the troughs obviously our motivation everyone's motivation is to get a contract and stay in good neck and, and stay on as much as possible, but like some days you wake up and you're like I am flat. Like this is like nothing's happening today. So you do like have, and obviously with with a newborn as well. I'm I'm on my feet a fair whack uh, with um, with a little one throughout the day. So it's been nice to have that time uh, with her, um, and also give Lorna a break uh, from um, full time full time motherhood. Um, so yeah, it's 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 uh, an interesting time for us all. Absolutely. Indeed. So, um, so Murray, I mentioned earlier on that you've <coughs> obviously you've played both both Edinburgh and Glasgow. I think I know the answer to this, but which which one did you prefer? It's <laughs> I like myself. I like them both for different reasons. I like them both for very different reasons. But Edinburgh obviously always be very special to me in terms of um, my it's, it's my home professional club and. Uh, and and I played uh, over sixty games there. That's the club that uh, that helped me get capped and gave me my first run out and things like that. Um, but then again, Glasgow they threw me a lifeline. I was in I was I was in a black hole of rugby players last uh, the back end of last season. Uh, oh sorry, two seasons ago in um, in the twenty twenty one, and um, and with obviously. Boy, Xander being away with the Lions and boys being away with Scotland, they were like, "Look, we need someone. Do you fancy it for six months?" And I was like, "Yes, get me in. I'm, I'm in." And uh, so they they threw me a lifeline, and um, and I owe them a lot for that. I owe Danny Wilson a lot for that, um, for for giving me that gig. And 
I sort of myself out to Worcester shortly after that. Uh, but yeah, so Edinburgh will always be my number one, but Glasgow, um, have, they, they did a really important thing for me. So, so do you mind me asking how how did the, the whole Worcester thing come about? Was it was it so Sol- Alan Solomon? Is it that kind of well, my, towards my, agent, uh, my agent's John Andres. You'll remember him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's uh, and he obviously played under Solly as well. <clears throat> and they Worcester had a, a an injury, a couple injuries, and and they were kind of a bit under uh, underdone it at Tighthead and at Prop. So, um, yeah, they got in touch. It was after. So I had I played a Newcastle preseason game for Glasgow. That wasn't my best. Played against Worcester was much better. Played against Ulster. Felt like I was building some momentum. Um, and then I had the Zoom call uh, after Ulster. After the Ulster game with JT and uh, was that with JT? Yeah, I think it was with JT and Solly. I remember speaking to Luke Broad, their manager, and Coxie. She was the um, she did a lot of the logistics management. Uh, so it happened pretty early in the season, um, and I know Glasgow were uh, potentially looking to keep me for the year, and they were kind of trying to locate funds and see what the crack was, but then. Um, the opportunity of something um, what I thought would be a bit longer term at, uh, right, at Worcester right. it came about and it got me like I like we spoke about earlier on um, away from obviously not away from my pals because I don't like that I don't obviously don't like being with your pals but then being away from a team that has like Zander and Bergie and Kevil and Batty and everyone like that like uh, not that I'm not one that wants to fight for a position but it means that we can all be playing. Uh, and, and and that's exactly what Worcester uh, presented to me was a massive opportunity to play um, so much so that after I was meant to be 24th man against Edinburgh on the 27th of December but when that got called off because of Covid I had calls that night I drove down to Worcester I got released from my contract a few days early I drove down to Worcester on the 28th played against Gloucester which actually was the biggest crowd of the year between Christmas and New Year everyone just wanted to piss up again the Prem Cup mid <laughs> Um, we beat Boston on the 29th. I went out and got to know the boys in Worcester Town that night and then drove back to Edinburgh to my flat for New Year. Um, that's how much I just wanted to play rugby. I got down and played that game and then came back up, packed my bags and then got back down that Sunday. Cool. That's a week. So there's a, so, so the question I'm going to have to ask, sorry, uh, uh, you know. Uh, no, go okay. quick. But it's uh, just with the, the whole um, prop thing. What's you know you love obviously you've you've come up against a fair few of the well-known props uh, within the English league now. Um, any highlights? Any um, any uh, people that you thought were going to be difficult but weren't? Um, anybody you got one over on that you really really were happy about? Uh, it's to be fair, you've all. I'm not going to be out here kind of bagging props and saying that. No, 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 I wasn't. Yeah, because there's not many. I tell you what, there's no props in the prem that are that are uh, that make you kind of be in that league. But I remember particularly going up against. I know he he, t- he did take a couple of penalties off of us, but I remember playing loose head. It was actually a couple of loose head games. One against Quinns, um, against Will Collier, and he's, he's he before he kind of took a knock at the start of this season. He was very much in form. Um, and so it was good testing myself against him, and, uh, and 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 I enjoyed that. And then we took, we've we we didn't have a particularly effective scrum last year for a variety of reasons. We just we weren't clicking, and we went into the Wasps game away, and took two penalties off them in my time on the pitch. We didn't concede any, and we were pretty dominant. Um, and I was up against Bialo, and he's a big fella. That man can scrummage. Um, yeah. We, we got it right that day, which was uh, which was really positive. Um, and I'm trying to think wise, uh, we had oh Exeter this year at the start of the season. Um, obviously, they're a they're a big pack and they're an effective pack. And against Alec Hepburn, obviously he's been uh, he's been trucking about in the pen for a little while, and he's a handy yeah. player. And, um, I felt like we had, we scored very, very very well against them. Uh, this season, so yeah, I've I've come up against some some crackers already. Cooney Eustusen, I was the tight head I played against in my first game for Worcester at Loosehead, uh, and uh, and then the last game of the season against Bath I had a pretty positive game um, when I came off the bench at tight head. So 
no, it's, I've, I've I've come up against some some corkers so far in my uh, in my few months here. So um, at the moment, did you ever get what Ellis Genge? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, I, I, I never got Ellis Genge. Uh, not not at the. I wouldn't want to say the pleasure of playing against him because the man's a monster. <laughs> He is, he's, a, he's an incredible rugby player, that man. Um, and could could you frighten him the same way John Welsh did? <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair, uh, that was uh, Welsh. Welsh is Welsh. has got um, he's got a couple of tricks in his pocket. That man, he's uh, he's pretty handy. You see, he's, under eighteens boxing champion, so. Like uh, he, boxing, he was an issue. Yeah, boxing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, well, she be, well, be good with his hands. Um, I'd imagine in that, uh, in that sense. I was, I was just saying, Murray. What, what's, what side of the scrum do you prefer? Well, uh, I'd say different reasons for both. If I'm honest, uh, I want to. I could probably see myself, and I want to. I want to play tight head and progress at tight head with. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for that. Come on! <laughs> Where you've spoken about there being more of an opportunity with the, with the country lacking in numbers for the national team as well, yeah. we are stacked at loose head. Um, yeah. But again, uh, I just want to be playing rugby, and as long as I'm getting sufficient reps on both sides, I'm um, I'm keen to play both sides. I just want to be playing code and and scrummaging because. If, even if I play, um, even if I'm playing one side in a game at the weekend, they'll try and get reps on the other side as well in training, just so I'm keeping up. It's a it's, it's a rear prop that plays both sides. I suppose you find it more more in the club game, but uh, it's a it's a rear prop nowadays that plays plays both sides in the professional game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's I enjoy it. It's good fun. Um, I haven't done I haven't done many. I've done both sides in, in in one game many times. There's a few times I did it for Edinburgh. Um and there was and I did it in the Prem Cup final uh, last year when uh I can't remember if I've done it any other times. Recently. I did it for I did it for Harriet's quite a few. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, in the in the professional game there's been a handful for Edinburgh and then obviously one for one for Worcester. It's a great, great skill to have in your locker anyway, and uh, certainly, uh, as you said, uh, getting game time. Um, that's a it's, a, it's a great way to ensure you're always going to be there or thereabouts. And uh, it seems to be quite a, I, I don't, I don't know, like maybe with the move towards kind of, you know, obviously, Gregor Townsend talks a lot about kind of, you know, multi-positional players and people being able to, you know, cover all sorts of different uh, places in case of emergency. It, what 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 was the conversation like when they said, "Do you fancy going the other way, and do you, do you fancy trying a wee bit of the other side of uh, propping, or, or is it just something you've always kind of put your hand up and said, "I can do this"? Um, I I was actually just put in it loose. I, I played tight end when I was growing up. Um, that's just where I was. Uh, I was like, I was the big fella. I was the fridge of a bloody fourteen year old. So they were like, "Right, you're going there," and then it was. At under 18s and under 20s, um, to have Xander at tight head, and then they're like, You're going to play loose head. I was like, You sound. And then it was Stevie Scott and Alan Solomon who sat me down when I was in the academy, and they're like, You're going to play tight head. Look at the shape of you. You are going to be tight head. I was like, Sound. I was like, Just, I was like, Put me there, I'll play it. And it came a bit sooner than they planned at Edinburgh when that was the season WP I had a, a pretty dodgy neck. Bergie had a bit of tough toe um, and they brought in a couple of boys on loan that just, they, they didn't seem particularly, oh, Kevy Bryce took a knock and then they, they brought in a couple of loan boys that they, they didn't seem to want to play. So they had a, a rather overweight, even more unfit than I am now, um, Murray McCallum, 19-year-old Murray McCallum trucking out. I played, I was in the squad, I remember, because it was my first season, my dad had it all on bloody spreadsheets and that, he loved it. Uh, and I had played, Don't get played, John Tart on spreadsheets, by the way. Christ. I was in the squad 23 times and played 21 games at 19 uh, at, at both sides, to be fair. Um, uh, that season, I played loads on, on both sides. I think I played almost half and half um, for Edinburgh that 2016 17 season. Mm. Uh, and yeah, so it was it was um, it was Stevie and Solly that sat me down and said, You're going to do that. And then since then, since I played under twenties at loose head and a little bit at tight head, 
um, I've always I've always kind of jumped around. Was that? I'm trying to think because I, I did a I did a um, a coach a scrum coaching session with the SRU with Stevie down at Murrayfield. I'm trying to think if that was about that same time because was Forty still hooking at that time. Oh, I was yeah, I played, I, played a, I played a few seasons with Forty. All right, because uh, like because that that was when I always remember Stevie saying, you know, at, at, at that time you hooking wasn't the most important thing. Um, no, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't compulsory. And yeah, that was so the, Edinburgh did. We <laughs> <could>. <laughs> and uh, and I remember actually um, he was getting a bit anxious before one of the games we had Ulster at home um, in that first season, and he asked Neil Cochran before the game. Not not I wouldn't say he was. He had, didn't have trust in us. He was probably just a bit kind of apprehensive because it was Jack Cosgrove at loose head and me at tight head. Mm. Uh, and then Neil Cochran at hooker. And he asked Nelly and he was like, are you going to hook today? And Nelly went, no, no I'm not going to hook. <laughs> and um, we we were very, very neutral all day. And we won that game. Um, Ruan Pinar, Charles Piatow, the lot playing for Ulster. And I remember we won at Murrayfield. And it was... I remember that was, game. That yeah. was class. Yeah, was, that was my first. That was my first start in the Pro 14, which was a. Uh, oh, was it still the Pro 12? Or Pro 14. I can't mind. I think it was the 14 at that time. Mm. Don't That's even get started true. on the, what 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 the league was called. What what is called? Imagine yeah. you boys are lot to say about all that. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, listen, the Ultimate Fighting Championship is, is, is what it is now, so that's the way it is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> it's going yeah. well. It's a, bloody, it's a bloody good comp um, at the moment. And whoever, whoever, and obviously they've got Rock Nation there, whoever's behind the kind of marketing and the advertising, they've, um, they, are, they are selling it. And it, yeah. it, it, it's an exciting league. So all the rebrands aside, they have played <laughs> Yeah, they've they've course, made the people course. who like said it was a dingy competition compared to the Prem in the top fourteen look really silly because it <laughs> seems like the most stable of all the competitions now. And, exactly, and, and it's people, exciting. Well, they just gave the administration liquidated and wasps look like they're dust as well. It's brutal. But then there's two Welsh teams who are insisting on joining. <laughs> <laughs> See you later then. Oh, well, good call, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So what what's your take on the uh, on Always. on what's going on at Edinburgh just now then with the with the the way that um the performance of Edinburgh what's your your take now obviously you, you're you've just been desperate to get that. someone else to say Edinburgh are great aren't you? listen don't you start your <laughs> don't you start your, your Glasgow bias pish now um, and, uh, <laughs> but but obviously there's, there's there's been a we had a, a fairly big upturn when Cockers was about um and then it kind of tailed off a little bit and then we've got um. You know, Mike Blair, and what, what's your take on it? What what do you do you hear? Uh, do you, and I'm not looking for for gossip. I'm talking more about what what do you hear from the boys? Everyone seems to be enjoying the rugby there. What's your thoughts? Oh, the, yeah, the environment's fantastic. <coughs> the boys, the boys are, are really enjoying um, going into work, and they're and, and they're working hard. And and Mike's Mike's given them license to try uh, just to play rugby and play what's in front of them. Obviously, he'll have a you'll have a game plan. What that is, I mean, I've not obviously studied Edinburgh, I've not had to this year in terms of yeah. um, analysis or anything, but um, from what I've seen of them, uh, they, they do play some kind of exciting stuff and and the boys are enjoying it. I know Blair's loving having that um, responsibility at 10 because uh, obviously um, in, in previous years it might have been more to the coach's um, game plan and it might not have had much say from the players. However, uh, I think players have a lot more autonomy now at the club, and are um, are enjoying and embracing that uh, responsibility that they've been given. And that's the thing. That what's uh, again? Uh, you know, okay, it's very Edinburgh centric because obviously I'm the Edinburgh uh, voice and and this this sea of Glasgow. Um, but uh, what's your take on on the whole Blair King Horn ten? Obviously, he played he plays there when he was. Coming through the youth section, etc., and he and he, and he started as a ten. What? Well, I'm not going to ask you the question of whether you'd rather have him at fifteen or ten, but obviously, he's, for me, he's he's come on leaps and bounds. But he seems to be a guy that would play that could play anywhere in the back line, and he would put in a huge performance. What's your your take on it? Blair Blair's just a terrific rugby player, and he loves playing rugby and being on the pitch. And I think whatever position that the coach wants him to be, he's incredibly adaptable. And as long as that coach gives him, uh, shows him, sorry, belief 
and com- and gives him confidence, Blair will go out and kill it um, because he's Mike's given him that confidence and responsibility, like I said, to play ten, and he's and he's given him um, the kind of the chance to express himself and and have and, pro- and I, I reckon have say on attack and plays uh, within the team and 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 Blair's relishing that opportunity. And is is as you can see building some form and, and and going very well. So, uh, uh, Craig, Craig's absolutely right. So that that that's that side of the M eight covered. So uh, so Murray <laughs> Warrior three hundred thirty three. Just to just to remind oh, you. Oh, he's been here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, no, you you mentioned earlier on. Obviously, you you uh, played under Danny Wilson at Glasgow. Things didn't necessarily work out that well in the end up for Wilson at Glasgow. But what, what was your feel uh, at the club around? Uh, who was Danny Wilson as a coach, first of all? And uh, I, I like Danny. Um, I think he was, I rate him as a coach, I rate him as a person. Uh, he was he was good. He was. Um, things didn't seem to click at the club towards the end. And obviously, ultimately, the man in charge gets the boot. That's that's just, that's the way of life. And, and he's well aware of that. And um, I mean, anyone in the jobs aware that it goes coaches then players, um, and someone someone asked the shift, and sadly it was it was Danny on that occasion. Uh, but no, I, I got on with him incredibly well. Uh, I knew him brief from his uh, from my brief involvement in Scotland camps while he was there, um, and no, he, he like I said, he gave me the opportunity. Um, he and yeah, he was. I've got no qualms with him. And when I was there. Games I played, we God, we should have beaten Ulster in that first game of the season last year. God, we should have beaten Ulster. I was, I was fizzing at the. Uh, I can't remember who the ref was. I was fizzing at the scrums at the end. Um, me, I think it was me and Batty that were on, and and we were we we had a bit of dominance, and he wasn't giving us anything. Was the lighthouse? I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten how hard you might. Yeah, I think, I think that might be him. Um, Ian, it might have been. I think it was. was yeah. I think it was. I think it was Ben. Um, but yeah, we were we were slightly frustrated after that game. It's like um, I usually kind of like Ben Whitehouse, but then like there's been a couple of games. There's one, another one, Warriors against Munster in Tolman Park when I saw the Munster team and I thought we were going to get murdered here, <laughs> and we took it to them like to the death, and it was amazing. The back row was um, Ash Cully, coming to his six, but we had uh, George Horn, Pete Horn, nine ten. And, like Munster had Omani and Keith Ells, like they had their front line guys out. The big guns out and, get... and then it was at the very last, the very last second of the game, Ben Whitehouse gave a really terrible decision because Omani takes Cully out of the rock with no like miles beyond getting to the rock, and then Sanders off his feet as he, you know, <laughs> allegedly jackals. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's like, I oh, it was fiz- so, I mean, it's, it's not like you when... to remember this in so much detail yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd woke up at half the clock in the morning that day because uh, I'd just downloaded Red Dead Redemption 2 and I played Red Dead Redemption 2 for like <laughs> 11 hours and then I went, I'm actually turning this off because this game is so good right now. I'm, like, I I just, I'm just really impressed that Ian's got through that whole discussion about Munster and he hasn't sworn once. I know. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Only, oh, only seven story. minutes to go, Ian, and then you can tell They are really sitting good. in my belly right now. All the <laughs> worst. It's like Malcolm Tucker just sitting here. Pure, <laughs> pure niche detail from Ian, as, as expected, though. Um, so we'll, we'll f- finish off, Murray. Just a, a couple of last questions for you. So one one of our patrons has uh, asked. I'm not going to ask you to name three, but they've said if you were to write the ultimate props cookery book, what would be your what would be your signature dish? Oh, pulled pork. Oh, be still. Yeah. Oh, do an amazing pulled pork. Pulled pork with um, brioche buns. Um, uh, a, probably a purple slaw because it looks fancier and um, pickles. Ooh, I'm hungry. On top, but... <laughs> right? I'm hungry. <laughs> you can hungry. <laughs> yeah, that would certainly be that would be the go-to. That's that's a, that's an absolute winner. Um, that's... Sounds good. We need you. We need you back playing some rugby, mate, so you can get that restaurant opened. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And, and, down. and uh, we'll, we'll the, get over the for some rugby port. podcast. Smoking pit is officially open. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, which which player do you or which player 
past, present, future, whatever, have you do you most admire of any nationality and why? Oof. I'd say Mossy. Yep. Um, watching him truck out and watching him ab- do, absolutely tear up for someone that should fold like a wet tracky every time he was hit. Uh, he was hard as nails and was certainly one of the reasons that many people in my generation got into rugby and loved watching Scotland play. He was he, he was a big inspiration for boys um, growing up. Certainly not certainly not for people in my um, not for everyone my size. Um, we we did look up to Chunk, but Chunk gave us a Chunk gave us a lot of um, a lot of hope for the big boys. But watching Mossy truck out, um, uh, he, he did it for the for the weird fellas, and it was great to watch uh, growing up. That tackle on Ben Foden back in what two thousand nine ten was that. That was what, what, what computer computer game came out that day, Ian? Sorry? What computer game came out that day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, rugby 04. 04. No. <laughs> Remember him That's running right. all the way across the length, of, like the width of the pitch, to get that tap tackle and drag uh, Foden out of touch. And Foden was a probably a far faster man, over 100 metres, but just the region of Mossy. Was, uh, he, he, did just, he just punched well above his weight in that department, didn't he? It says a lot about his mentality as well. That 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 was like I think it's safe to say that wasn't a terribly successful Scotland team. Uh, we weren't exactly you know world beaters, and to be able to kind of go out there and do that constantly, and you know, it was never anything less than a hundred percent from him. So, um, yeah. what to be said, true legend. If we could stay in the game, then we could just trust his boot. Exactly. I, I remember having a conversation with a boy. I uh, was watching, I think it was Scotland Wales, down down at Millennium Stadium as it was at the time, and uh, we were talking about. I think Wales had scored early, and I was like, "I don't worry, it's only it's only three parts and penalties, we're fine." <laughs> <laughs> but when I was a student, in Wales, I went out. Uh, like old firm game kicked off at like noon, and then Scotland Wales kicked off at half two, and I went into the student union and just basically get absolutely wrecked. It's when. Uh, Mossy took over kicking for Kenny Logan. Wow. That's uh, Kenny, Kenny Logan missed a couple. Uh, yeah, 2000. Uh, 2000 you, didn't want to know, you didn't want to start, start talking about age because I remember when <laughs> I was 16, 16 with the first 15 members going to. Mossy was not playing you were 16, mate. No, no, David Soul was. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and Craig Chalmers and uh, and um, uh, and that that fateful day and that, that we ended up uh, doing Rose Street absolutely and I don't remember getting a train home. Um, on that day. <laughs> that's when you that's when you stood in the in the north stand and there was no cover. So uh, that's how old I am. <laughs> Showing your age indeed. So. We're coming up to the end of the hour, guys. So um, we're going to drop off the kind of free stuff. Murray, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for putting up with our uh, daft questions as well. Uh, so solving some of the world's biggest mysteries. <laughs> of course, as well. Definitely so, as well. Definitely. <laughs> there you go. It is definitive. Um, we, we, for for those that are, pay their patrons, pay, pay your dues. You can hang around. We're going to be we're going to be cutting loose a wee bit. For the next hour behind the paywall, uh, Murray, you're um, welcome like, to join us. See, when we talk about the Women's World Cup game, I'm gonna swear a lot. I yeah, you, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like oh. the highlight as well, actually. Yeah, oh. I, I, I deliberately decided I was, was going to bring the women's game into it. I thought, you know what, there was a segue at one point when we were talking, I was like, no, no, Ian's gonna need therapy for this, so I thought, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep this behind the paywall so we can cut loose a wee bit. But, uh, yeah, for, for those. Uh, patrons that want to keep with us, um, please hang about. Otherwise, it is good night for me. Good night from Murray, Craig, Ian, and Johnny. Ciao. Yeah, Bye. 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 Bye.